order. And that, and that concludes questions for I'll answer. Would some honourable member care to move that the House take note of miscellaneous business? The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Uh, I so move. Mr Speaker, one of the hallmarks of a political party that seeks the privilege of being in government is that it needs to demonstrate that it's enthusiastic and that it's energetic about leading the country. And last night, I thought we saw a very good example of that at the conclusion of the 15-hour budget debate and what was essentially a vote of confidence in the government. On this side of the House, the benches were full to overflowing. It looked like the North Stand at Eden Park on test day. Whereas on the other side of the House, Mr Speaker, it looked like Maidstone Park number four on a windswept Saturday afternoon. And they looked about as enthusiastic about being here as they would on a horizontal rain day at Maidstone Park, Mr Speaker. And why would they have that sort of enthusiasm? Not even their leader, the leader of the opposition, Mr Little, could be bothered completing his allotted time in the budget debate. He couldn't wait to get out the door and leave fast enough because he knew he was on a hiding to nothing thanks to a very, very good budget 2017, Mr Speaker. And let's go through some of the many highlights. I want to reinforce the issue of vote health, which has the highest vote increase in that vote for a very, very long time. $3.9 billion over four years, uh, $879 million in this year alone. And I've got some advice for the opposition spokesman on health, because Dr Clark might know a little bit about existential philosophy. But I have to say, as maths is absolutely appalling, because a very large increase in vote health that may nevertheless have been less than what the profligate Labor spenders would have invested is not a cut, Mr Speaker. It is a substantial investment, and it's a targeted investment in the areas that have the most benefit. And Mr Robertson catches that bug as well with research and development. When he said on the TV that the budget was silent on R&D, when he knows, well, Mr Hosking got actually the memo, didn't he? Because there was a quadrupling, a quadrupling, in the, well, he read the budget for a start, which was a, a, a great deal more than the opposition finance spokesperson did. A quadrupling in the Marsden Fund and a doubling of Innovative New Zealand. And on the family incomes package, of course, Mr Robertson went to great pains to try and slice and dice this and portray it as a tax cut for the rich when nothing could be further from the truth. Mr Joyce last night summed it up when he said this is a family incomes package. And we have heard examples of where some of our more vulnerable families in high cost housing areas will be receiving more than $150 a week as a consequence of this budget. <coughs> now the Greens understood it, New Zealand first understood it and supported the legislation that would give effect to that, but Labor didn't get the memo. And you would think that Mr Robertson, after having had so long to think about an alternative tax policy, an alternative incomes package, eight and a half years to come up with a coherent alternative to this government's plan, and what have they got? They're going to give us a review. They're going to go into government, that's their plan, they're going to review tax policy after eight and a half years of thinking about it. They still come up with no independent thought about what a tax plan could be. But I actually, call me suspicious, Mr Speaker, I think they have a plan, they just don't want to campaign on it. And it's that typical Labour tax plan, raise taxes, spend more of other people's money, Mr Speaker. And on the housing... $100 million for the Crown Land Program, a couple of hundred million dollars for social housing, and we're seeing the benefits of the many things that this government is doing in respect of increasing supply and reducing house price inflation. No thanks to Labor. No thanks to Labor, who oppose every measure that this government is doing. They oppose Point England. They oppose Three Kings. They talk about housing supply, but they can't bring themselves to support this government's initiatives. So I've got some advice, I think, <coughs> Mr Speaker, for that party who aspire to be in government. My advice to them is this. Just do exactly what you're doing now, because if that's the case, then I think the New Zealand public will know very clearly who has the enthusiasm, who has the energy, and who has the ideas to continue to uh, lead this country 
and this side on budget confidence will always look like the North Stand at Eden Park. The question is the motion be agreed to Grant Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It was Hubert.